mountains. Endless mountains. Peak after barren peak. And what lies restless in the shadowed valleys? I cannot say. I cannot say. Welcome to Night Vale. Hello. Let's start there. Let's start with a greeting, a simple hello, and then let's move right into the most exciting news, the most wonderful news. As you may remember, a few weeks ago, along with the beginning of a vicious war against us by tiny people from a tiny underground city, Carlos, the beautiful scientist, finally returned my expressions of affection. And not in that dry science way he always used to use, saying things like, I'm not calling for personal reasons. I need to tell your radio audience about a strange hole that might appear in their wall. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's a strange hole that might appear in your wall. He said it was important to tell you, especially after what happened in the Smithwick house. I forgot. That was a while back, so I guess it doesn't matter much now. But yesterday, when he called me, he started his call by saying, I am calling for personal reasons. Also, my calculations show a strange source of energy approaching the town, but not emanating the kind of light that such a source should. Isn't that so sweet? And well, one thing led to another. And last night, we went out on our first date. I just have to tell you about it. I have certain obligations though. So, first, let's get to the news. The secret police, in association with a vague yet menacing government agency, announced that those trucks full of crates far out in the desert are nothing, and that we shouldn't worry about them. The trucks, which no one in town knew about until this announcement, are filled with crates that are warm to the touch. Some of them tick, Others do not. Don't even worry a little about them, say the secret police. Forget we said anything. No, really, remembering we said anything is now against the law. We reached out to Lieutenant Regis of Unit 7 of the local National Guard Station and KFC Combo Store for a comment and he said he's been ruminating on a lot of things. Just a lot of stuff's been running through my mind. That's an interesting phrase, running through the mind. Where are those thoughts going? Are they trying to leave? And if so, for where? When pressed to comment specifically about the trucks full of crates out in the desert, he just repeated everything he had said with the exact same inflections and gestures. Well, I'm sure these crates won't come up again and pose no future danger to any of us. No more on this story, ever, I'm sure. The Night Vale Public Library will be expanding into a second branch, the Night Vale Private library. This library will be right next door to the current location and will be available only to one person, local billionaire Marcus Vanston. 
It will contain thousands of books on any given subject, an interactive children's area shaped like a full-sized pirate ship, and a biography section featuring not just biographies of Helen Hunt, but also biographies of Sean Penn. Plans include floor-to-ceiling windows facing the public library, which Marcus, the only person who will ever be allowed inside, says he will use to stroll nude through his library, staring ordinary citizens in the eyes as he does not read or make any use of the towers of books around him. Marcus continued, Maybe I will pick up a book and open it, as though I were going to read it, but then reveal to those watching that I am holding it upside down before laughing and throwing the book away. I'm not sure. I haven't planned out every moment. I will definitely be nude, though. The Public Library Board of Directors issued a statement via loudspeaker from their helicopter that hovers continuously over our city, indicating that they feel this expansion will serve the community by showing how rich Marcus is, and what a great guy that obviously makes him. And have you seen how many cars that guy owns? Wow! Reports also indicate that the Night Vale Private Library will be entirely free of librarians, a fact that will be of little comfort to the many public library goers who are injured or killed in librarian maulings every year. Remember, if confronted by a librarian while looking for a book to check out, do not attempt to escape by climbing a tree. There are no trees in the library, and the precious moments it will take you to look around and realize this will allow the librarian to strike. Don't become a statistic. All right, news done. So, now let's talk about the date. Carlos and I met up in Old Town. I was wearing my best tunic and furry pants, and he had on a laid-back weekend lab coat. We were both beautiful in the late afternoon sunlight. Each other's dreams met in a real-world moment. Our destination was none other than Gino's Italian dining experience and grill and bar, the fanciest restaurant in town. It was a perfect day. Other than the strange blot of darkness buzzing on the edge of town. But that was probably yet another Applebee's under construction. We went arm in arm into Gino's and were immediately seated with no memory of who greeted us at the door or how we got to our table, situated in a classy, understated, and absolutely doorless room. The full Gino's experience. Their menu is somewhat limited after the ban on wheat and wheat byproducts, so we each ordered a single portobello mushroom served rare and bloody, as is the Gino's way. From the window, we had a great view of the sunset and of the buzzing shadow thing, which seemed to have moved closer. I've been thinking, Carlos said. Uh-huh, I said. Yeah, that's what I've been doing lately, he said. Thinking. It's part of being a scientist. What have you been up to? And so we talked. Just us and our bleeding mushrooms, and the buzzing shadow presence, and a blooming haze of romance in the air. Wait. Hold on. Station management is apparently getting agitated, uh, f flailing around their office and howling. 
So I need to do some more news real quick. Violent incidents increased across the entire Night Vale area over the last several weeks. As the people of the miniature city under Lane 5 of the Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex continue to wage their war against us with tiny bodies and tinier weapons. Citizens are urged to protect themselves against this army in our midst by stomping everywhere they go and keeping a vigilant watch towards the ground rather than keeping our eyes closed as we usually do. In related news, the city council has erected a monument to the fallen Apache tracker, that hero who died for the welfare of us all. The monument will be dedicated in a secret, silent ceremony attended by no one, and the monument itself will be buried somewhere in the desert where no one will find it, because he was also a racist embarrassment and we don't want our town associated with that kind of thing. And now, the community calendar. Monday will be the annual Bluegrass Festival, held in the burned-out shell that used to be Louis Blasco's music shop, before he lit it on fire and skipped town with the insurance money. Participants can huddle among the ashen remains, casting haunting looks at each other and sharing some of their favorite bluegrass dirges. Legend has it that if you look into a mirror and say absolutely nothing three times, Louis himself will appear and teach the crowd some simple, easy bluegrass licks before taking your soul back with him into the dark of the mirror. Tuesday is a holiday. Make sure you have adequate emergency supplies and plenty of clear plastic sheeting. We're not sure which holiday it is, so have all possible antidotes on hand. Wednesday, the staff of Dark Owl Records are getting a band together. We know a lot about music, they'll say, grabbing knives and hammers. We should start a band, definitely, they'll continue over the screams. Let's get a band together. We should do that. Thursday through Sunday will be a blur of routine and practicalities, a series of moments and actions that we will fail to notice as we experience them and will forget the moment they are gone. This has been the Community Calendar. All right, boring stuff done. Back to the date. We wrapped up dinner at Gino's with a slice of their special, invisible, non-corporeal, and tasteless carrot cake which was as light as air and resembled air in all other qualities as well. Our waiter, formerly a heavy-set man with a large mustache, was now a buzzing shadow man defined only by the absence of light in the vague shape of a torso and limbs. Presumably, our former waiter was on break. We asked for the check and then made our escape from the doorless room by breaking the window using the brick our waiter had provided for that purpose. Carlos and I, all oh, the magic of that phrase, all oh, the ecstasy of all that a simple conjunction can imply, took a stroll through Mission Grove Park. It was just us, and the trees, and the crowd of our fellow citizens who were all doing the usual recreational activity of pointing at the sky and shouting in terror. 